Have you always wanted your own raised bed garden? Abundant with fresh fruits and vegetables, but just didn't know where to start? If so, this video is for you. I'm gonna guide you through the entire process, step by step, from assembling metal raised beds to getting them water. By the end, you'll have everything needed to have your own garden of plenty. It's never been easier to create your own raised bed garden. It can be done in just a few simple steps. I'm gonna show you how to assemble the metal beds, how to fill them with dirt in such a way that it not only lowers costs, but increases effectiveness at the same time. How to plant the beds with both transplants and some seeds we'll plant in the square foot gardening method. And finally, how to water them efficiently with automatic drip irrigation. All right, let's dive right in and get this project started. Here in this box is our two foot by five foot raised bed. Let's take a look at what comes inside. First, is the one page instruction sheet. Next, we've got our hand wrench, our bag of nuts, bolts, and washers, our rubber strip. This goes along the edges at the top to prevent any chance of cutting yourself or anyone who is working with the raised bed. And finally, the metal panels that make up the walls of the raised bed itself. The included items are all you need to assemble the metal beds. These metal beds are available in multiple sizes and shapes, including three long rectangular beds and one round bed. They're also available in three different colors. The different colors can match almost any landscape, and due to their modularity, they can conform to almost any landscape shape. Now we're going to assemble the beds using the instructions that came in the box. We're going to start by laying our panels in the configuration that we'd like to build it in. We're going to put together the standard configuration, two feet by five feet. Remove the protective coating from each of the panels. Assemble the straight panels first using your nuts and your bolts and the washers. Then attach your corner panels. One thing to keep in mind is it's a lot easier to put them together on a solid, flat surface. Now we're going to put on our protective rubber strip. It goes along the edge here across the lip. Run it along the edge until the edge is completely covered, and then cut off the remainder. All right, we've got this one assembled. We're going to go assemble the rest, and I'll show you what to do to fill them up. The beds come in either 17 or 32 inches high. This one here is one of the 32 inch high beds. Handy for plants with larger root systems or for folks who don't want to spend too much time hunched over in the garden. The taller beds bring the garden level up to you. With the beds assembled, it's time to start thinking about filling them up. And as you know, dirt is not dirt cheap. We're going to fill our beds with a method known as culture, And it will not only lower cost, but actually increases effectiveness at the same time. culture is a method of using different materials to fill the bed before you top it off with a layer of topsoil. It starts with a layer of cardboard, then some logs, then some plant waste, compost, and finally, a small layer of topsoil. And we're gonna use that method today in each of our beds. It's time to plant our beds. And then we're gonna add our irrigation. So we've got our beds built in place, filled and planted. And now it's time to get drip irrigation to them. To do so, we're gonna create a quick little design. Nothing elaborate, just a pen and a piece of graph paper. This is mainly about getting our tubing path and maybe a couple of our fittings figured out, such as tees and elbows. We're gonna start with our water source. And now I'm gonna put the beds on relative to where about the water source is. It doesn't have to be perfectly to scale or anything like that, as long as you have a good rough idea. All right, we got the area drawn out and our beds put in. Let's go ahead and draw our tubing path, the route our tubing is gonna to take to get water to each of the four beds. Go ahead and draw my header rows in. All right, now let's draw in our drip line. I know in each bed, I'm going to do two runs of drip line. Now let's draw in our fittings so we can keep a small tally at the bottom of the page of how many fittings we need. This is the part that gets a lot of people. I know each of my drip line runs is going to need to end in a goof plug. For that, I'm just going to use a circle. With our goof plugs drawn in, let's go ahead and draw our end caps on our half inch header rows while we're thinking about it. Now I'm going to draw in my T's and elbows. I can see anywhere my main line splits in multiple directions, I know I'm going to need a T. And I'll just darken that in so it represents a T shape. Anywhere we turn 90 degrees, I know I'm going to need an elbow. Just like the T, I'll just darken it in so I have a 90 degree elbow shape. I know at the top of every bed, I'll need an elbow to elbow my main line into the bed to make my header row. 
we'll need a one quarter inch barb coupling everywhere we connect our drip line to our header row. And we're gonna put a half inch coupling valve on each bed so that each bed has its own on off capability. For that, we'll just use an X. At the bottom of the paper, I'll do a quick tally of all the fittings that my design calls for. I'll always add a few extra when I place the actual order, but that way it's nice and organized and right there on your design sheet. So let's count our T's. I see one, two, three T's. Elbows, I see one, two, three, four, five, and six. End caps, we have one end cap in each bed where our header row ends. So that's gonna be four end caps. For goof plugs, I have two per each bed to end our drip line runs, so that's gonna be eight goof plugs. And just like the goof plugs, we know we need one quarter inch coupling per run of drip line. That means there's two per bed for a total of two, four, six, and eight. And we used a one half inch coupling valve per bed so that each had its own on off. So that is one, two, three, and four one half inch coupling valves. Now, let's calculate how much main line and how much drip line we need. We know that our beds are five feet long and we have two runs of drip line in each bed. So that's 10 feet of drip line per bed. That gives us a total of 40 feet of drip line. Now, let's get a rough idea of how much main line we need. We know we've got about 20 feet from the water source. We know that each bed will have about two feet. So that's eight feet there, giving us a total of 28 feet so far. There's about four feet between each bed. So that gives us eight more for a total of 36. There'll be a little bit of main line needed to climb up each bed. So we're just gonna round up and say we need about 50 feet of main line. Since our main line tubing run is under 200 feet and there's less than 200 gallons per hour of water going through it, we'll be able to use a one half inch main line. If it was longer than 200 feet or had more than 200 gallons per hour going through it, we might have to bump that up to a three quarter inch. And then the only other thing we know we need is our head assembly. Remember the parts that connect everything to the water source. So we'll just write down one half inch head assembly. That's all there really is to it. We've designed our drip irrigation system. We know the parts and components we need. Now we can place our order. If you'd like to learn more about easily designing a drip irrigation system for your own home system, check out our video there to the top right. It's a step-by-step -step walkthrough. With the beds filled and planted, it's time to install the drip irrigation system based on our design. Here are all the components we're gonna to use to install our drip system today. Half inch poly tubing for a main line, and six inch spaced and 12 inch spaced drip line for the beds. We'll use the six inch spaced drip line in the more densely planted beds. We have our half inch fittings, our quarter inch fittings, some coupling valves so we can turn each bed on and off as needed. And then of course some stakes to hold things in place in our head assembly parts, the backflow preventer, the filter, the pressure regulator, and a timer so that we can automate the system. The head assembly is the parts that connect your irrigation system to the water source. They call it the head assembly because it goes at the very start or the top. The parts are mostly to protect your irrigation system from things like debris or too high of pressure. Let's connect our irrigation system to the water source. To do that, we're gonna build our head assembly starting with the timer since we wanna automate the system. This will be the very first thing we connect to the spigot. Next up is our backflow preventer. This prevents irrigation water from flowing back into the potable water supply. After the backflow preventer comes our filter to prevent any clogging in the irrigation system. After the filter comes our pressure regulator. This will protect our system from high pressure and keep our emitters dripping nice and uniform. And last up in the head assembly is our hose by tubing adapter. And this is the part that connects our mainline tubing to the head assembly and the water source. We're gonna bring our half inch mainline in here to the area where the beds are at. And we're gonna use a T so we can get our mainline to go to this bed and continue on to get our second bed. In the first bed, we'll use an elbow or a T to turn our tubing up, and then an elbow at the top to turn our tubing into the bed, where we're gonna create our header row. These are metal beds, so we can't use tubing clamps with nails or anything like that. So we'll show you how to get everything staked in place so you can build a nice, secure header row. So we ran our tubing in to the T here, and it's a T so that our main line can continue on to our further beds. And we use the bottom of the T to send our tubing up towards the bed. We put an inline coupling valve so that each bed can have its own on off capability. Elbowing into the bed, here's where we're going to create our header row using our half inch mainline tubing. And the header row is the part we'll connect our drip line to so we can actually deliver water to our plants. We're going to use the natural curvature of the tubing to create our header row matching the curvature of our raised bed. 
The stake, the elbow, and the weight of the irrigation tubing is enough to hold our header row in place. What we're gonna do next is punch holes so we can run our quarter inch drip line off our header row straight down the bed. Our drip line is the part that is actually gonna deliver water to our plants. All we need is our one quarter inch punch, our quarter inch drip line, and a one quarter inch coupling. The process is simple. I'll punch a hole in the header row where I wanna connect my drip line using my one quarter inch punch. Insert one end of the one quarter inch coupling into that hole, connect our quarter inch drip line to the other end of the coupling. I'll then run it down the row of the bed and cap it off at the end with a goof plug. I'll repeat that process twice so that we have two runs of drip line in our bed, one for each row of plants. Our square foot bed is a very densely planted bed. And for that reason, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna use drip line with six inch spacing instead of 12 inch spacing. Now that the irrigation is installed, it's time to flush the system. Flushing the system is an important step as it gets any debris that got inside during installation, and some always will, gets it flushed out of the end. It's also a good chance to walk the system, check for leaks near where you turn the water on, make sure your head assembly is not leaking. To flush the system, all you have to do is unthread the end caps on your system. Careful not to lose them while you have them unthreaded. Once you've got your end caps unthreaded, Turn on the water until water flushes out the end of your end caps. Let it flow for just a moment or two, and then shut off the water and put your caps back on. With the system flushed, there's one more step, and it's the fun one. It's time to turn it on and run its first watering cycle. When you do your first cycle, this is when you want to take the time to walk the system. Check for any leaks around fittings, joints, end caps, goof plugs. Make sure your emitters are dripping as they should. And there we have it. We now have a raised bed garden irrigated by automatic drip irrigation so we can have a healthy and bountiful garden. If you're ready for your own raised bed garden, you can find the metal beds right here. You can find the drip irrigation kit designed for those beds right here.